Hello, my name is Evelyn Sinclair and I'm an artist and illustrator based in Kendo in the English Lake District. I'm going to talk to you about the creation of my bee for the Manchester Bee in the City Art Trail. First of all, a wee bit about me. Uh, I'm a graduate of the famous Glasgow School of Art. I work full time as an illustrator on commissions such as illustrated maps for BBC Country File magazine, The World of Beatrix Potter and Cumbria Wildlife Trust. In fact, a map created for the Trust was shortlisted for a major illustration award. And one of my most recent jobs has been for an exhibition about the work of Roald Dahl, um, where I illustrated underground rooms from Fantastic Mr Fox. In recent years, I've been producing a series of sticker books aimed at encouraging youngsters to learn to love wildlife from an early age. The first one, the Lake District Sticker Book, was awarded one of the inaugural Beatrix Potter Awards awarded by the National Trust. Um, at the moment there are five editions, Lake District, Yorkshire, Cotswold, Derbyshire and Scotland. I first discovered painting art trail sculptures last year when I entered designs and was selected to paint three Henson pigs for an art trail around Gloucester. I enjoyed it so much that I looked for other opportunities to do the same kind of thing and have since been selected to paint a hare for the Global Hares Trail in Norwich and this bee for Manchester's Bee in the City Trail. I enjoy painting art trail sculptures because it's a lot of fun and a great work for one's creative thinking muscles. It's wonderful that a lot of people will see and hopefully enjoy my work plus there's the added satisfaction of helping a very worthy charity. It's certainly an honour to paint a bee for Manchester's Bee in the City. While I usually like to give the sculptures I create a persona, where the animal sculpture has human clothing and character, on this occasion I decided to take a different tack. This was because the bee blank sculpture was quite complex and I felt that the applied design should not try to ignore or disguise the, the insect form, but rather work with it and enhance it. It's at that point it occurred to me to incorporate another passion of mine into the design, steampunk. Steampunk is a social and aesthetic genre, a community of like-minded individuals who all have an enthusiasm for Victorian inspired science fiction. Think the writings of Jules Verne, The Time Machine, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Around the World in 80 Days. Steam trains, flying machines and airships, the great days of the British Empire, afternoon tea. Steampunk can often be recognised by top hats, extravagant Victorian style clothing, lots of accoutrements and particularly goggles. After all, you wouldn't want to get something in your eye when you're in the middle of an adventure. Cogs are a common motif reflecting the steampunk passion for Victorian technology. But it's all about self-expression and it's a very broad church, so pretty much anything goes. We have social gatherings around the country with markets, entertainments and a general promenading of splendidness. But one of the most fabulous things about steampunk is how much creativity and inspiration and invention it inspires. You see people who have previously never had any creative pastimes or thought of themselves as creative and suddenly they start to blossom and start producing their own outfits, accessories, devices and artworks. There's also an inbuilt ethos of recycling and repurposing things, a refreshing contrast to our current throwaway society. Unusual modes of transport are a common theme in steampunk art and literature. So I decided to transform my bee into just such a mechanical wonder Rocket, the steampunk bee. As a starting point, I took locally relevant inspiration from Robert Stevenson's steam engine Rocket, chosen to power the Liverpool to Manchester Railway in 1830. Its yellow and black livery made it a perfect choice for a ste steampunk fantasy bee. So the abdomen of my bee is made up of recycled articulated sections of the engine and its carriages. Brass is a popular choice for many steampunk accoutrements, so I've given Rocket a brass thorax and head. A window in his thorax shows the cogs and gears that power his wings, which are covered with a honeycomb-like pattern. Mixing traditional materials is also very steampunk, 
so Rocket's legs are made of wood with clever articulated joints. He perches on a housing for a large wheel, symbolic of steam engines, both mobile in the form of steam trains and static in the form of the engines that powered the machinery in many a Victorian factory. His slogan, be inventive, be industrious, is a call to harness our creativities, to, fa to fix problems and forge a new and different future. Lastly, a fabulous mode of transport should have a driver and crew. So Rocket's Head is a cockpit or bridge peopled by Lilliputian-sized steampunk adventurers. I hope you like him. <laughs>